you might have come for a traditional Christmas service, and this may not be traditional today. And um, I am uh, praying today that the Lord uses this to really touch your life and to touch your heart uh, today. So we're not going through the motions today. Um, we're dedicating this service to the Lord and just asking God to do something powerful in your heart today. Um, this, this message is the purpose of pain. And um, <clears throat> we've all stubbed our toe. Anybody this week? You know, with this many people, I was going to say, with this many people today, I know that there's somebody that stubbed their, their toe this week. And uh, <clears throat> if you have a family at all, uh, you, there's like obstacles that seem to be in the way. And uh, somebody gets hurt, and then I hear one of my kids like go to the ground reeling in pain, you know. And, uh, you know, oh, they, they stub their toe on, on the stairwell or they stub their toe on the step or whatever. We've all uh, stubbed our toes. Now, did you use a Christian curse word? Yeah, gosh, I don't know. Anyhow, um, here's the thing, is, is that pain, okay, we've all done that. Pain hurts, pain distracts. Um, you know, it slows us down. There, we all have these painful moments in our life. Uh, back in February, uh, I herniated a disc in my back, and many of you saw, like, even walking up the stairs was super, super painful. Uh, Cindy had to literally put my sock on for me. I mean, it was that uh, humiliating and humbling uh, for me. It was no fun at all, but that's what pain does. It, it slows us down, it distracts, it kind of consumes us. Life slows down. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the purpose of pain, um, but what kind of pain, I just want you to think about it today, and you may be like, no, this is Christmas Eve, I ain't going there. <laughs> But what kind of pain is in your life? Is it, is it physical pain? Is it emotional pain? Is it spiritual pain uh, that you have, this, this pain in life? And if you're breathing this morning, there's a little pain, right? It's, it's like, it's part of this journey. There's pain on this journey. I, I wish there wasn't. How many wish there wasn't? Come on. <laughs> I mean, there, there are things that happen in this life, and it's bigger than stubbed toes. I mean, even if you break the thing, you know, you can kind of get over that, and there's things to maneuver, but sometimes if there's emotional pain, or there's an emptiness in your heart, that pain, it takes a little bit more to get, to get over. And so, what kind of pain do you have in your life this morning? And, and the challenge is for you to offer that pain uh, to God. So what is the purpose of pain this morning? It really is to alert us to a problem. It's to alert us to a problem. Something isn't right. That is why there is pain, right? Like some of you right now, you've got a hunger pain. And you're like, Pastor Andy, the clock is ticking. We got lunch going on. Or give me a cookie or something. There's pain. And it alerts us to there is a problem. There's something not right. There's something going on. And so the big idea this morning is this, is God is in the pain of life. He's in it. He's in the pain of life. God is in your pain, and he uses the pain of life for his purposes, for his purposes. So we're reading the story of Joseph today, Joseph and Mary. So Matthew Chapter 1, verse 18, and it's going to be on the screen behind me uh, as well. 18 to 25. Here we go. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to dis disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, 
do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. God, thank you so much today that your word speaks directly to our hearts. Lord, right to where our lives, where we're living our lives, God, right where it hurts as well. God, you speak to us. God, open our hearts, open our minds today. Change us by your power, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at the lessons uh, from the pain of Joseph. Lessons from the pain of Joseph. The first one is this one, and we've hit on it just a little bit. No one is immune to pain. None of us are immune to pain. Pain touches all of our lives. Touches all of our lives. Joseph was just living life, growing up, looking to get married. How many remember that? Right? I remember many times as a young person thinking, oh God, would you please not come back until I get married? <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh God, I just wanna, I wanna get married. That's gonna be awesome. And it has been for 23 years. But I'm just saying, right? I remember, I remember that. And so here was Joseph, living life, growing up, looking to get married. Life was good, and then, wait a minute. Oh, so painful. Joseph stubbed his toe, so to speak. All of a sudden, he encountered a problem that was bigger than him, and what was he going to do? Matthew 1.18, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's Joseph. He's engaged. Now, I told you last week, this was like the real deal. This was not, you know, engagement is kind of like this whole deciding kind of deal. You know, I, I've sort of committed, I've half committed. That's how it is in the U.S., right? You know, I'm, I'm engaged, but we could still pull the plug on this. Right? To talk about pain, that would be painful. Just saying. Okay, so... But at this time, this was a contract, this was the real deal, this was like being married. This was a promise, this was a done deal. And so here all of a sudden, this was just overwhelming uh, to Joseph, overwhelming. No one is immune to pain. Life is painful. We have trouble and we run into pain. If you lose a job, if you wreck a car, if you get into a fight, if you get sick, if you want, run into relational trouble, marriage trouble, there's no end to the way that trouble can affect our lives. John 16, 33 says, says this, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take, take heart because I have overcome the world. This is Jesus speaking. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Psalm 90 verse 10 says, 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80, but even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. Well, this is exciting on Christmas Eve now, isn't it? But isn't it true? I mean, life is painful at times and we encounter things that we never signed up for. We encounter things that sometimes are just absolutely overwhelming. Pain is sometimes caused by eternal circumstances. And sometimes the only one to blame is us. Sometimes we want to blame everybody else, don't we? But at the end of the day, many times it's the person in the mirror that we really have to point all of our fingers at and say, you know, you are the problem. There's been many times in my life where I've had to do that 
as well. So lessons from Joseph here, no one is immune from pain. Another lesson here this morning is that God can speak to us in the midst of our pain. Have you ever had a problem that stopped you from doing anything else? A financial problem or a relationship problem that that just consumed everything. You couldn't think of anything else. And pain can be overwhelming and excruciating. Um, Everyone else is going on with their life. But for you, time has slowed down significantly. Everything is hard to do. The things that were easy are now hard. Am I speaking to anybody today? Consumed. And here Joseph was in pain. He couldn't get his mind off his new problem. Joseph had to assume that Mary was unfaithful. I mean, how else could this have happened, right? I mean, there's no way. How else could this have happened? In fact, how can I fix the problem? How can I make it go away? Have you been there before? I just want to go to sleep right now. Okay, I'm going to go to sleep. This is all a really bad dream. Right? And then you wake up in the morning. Oh, the problem. The problem is still there. See, Joseph ran into that as well. But here's the deal for Joseph and for us as well is that the Lord didn't just leave him in his pain. He sent an angel to speak to him. He sent an angel to speak to him. Matthew 1, 19, Joseph, to whom she was engaged, Mary was engaged, was a righteous man, and he did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. How can we sweep this under the rug? How can we fix this really quick? As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. God spoke to Joseph through the angel. Sometimes the pain of life is the only thing that provides the space for us to hear from the Lord. Did you catch that? Sometimes the pain of life is the only thing that provides the space for us to hear from the Lord. Sometimes we need something to happen to get our attention, to shake us up, to get us out of whatever we've accepted as normal so that we can actually hear from God. It's painful. It's painful. But God just doesn't leave us in our pain. He speaks to us. And this is why it's so important to be in God's word every day. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Studying it, meditating on it. This is how God speaks to us today. He could could bring an angel to us. He could. I prefer God's word so I don't, you know, have to go change my underwear or something. Honestly. Honestly. Okay, I prefer God's word. I prefer listening to the Lord. And so we have his word and we also have his spirit that can speak to us directly as we seek him, as we seek him. So God doesn't just leave us in our pain. If we are pursuing God, he'll speak to us. He'll speak to us through his word. He'll speak to us by his spirit. Here's another lesson. God is working out his purposes while we walk through our pain. God is working out his purposes while we walk through our pain. There are times when we think that nothing is happening and everything has gone dark. Can you think of a time like that? Everything has gone dark, nothing is happening. God's not doing anything. God doesn't care what I'm walking through. Everything has gone dark. Don't be 
deceived. God is always working. He's always working. He never stops working. Psalm 121, 4 says, Indeed, he who watches over us or watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. He's always working. There's going to be times in life when you feel like everything's dark, nothing's moving forward, this is a horrible time, it's never going to get any better, but God is in the midst of the darkness and he's working out his, his purposes as we walk through the pain of life. See, Joseph couldn't see the full picture, but he was given a window into it. Matthew 1.22, all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to her son. 600 years before this happened, it had already been prophesied that this would happen. Isaiah prophesied this. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we don't always understand the Lord is thinking at a level that is so far beyond our ability to understand. God's plans are bigger than us. Someone say they're bigger than us. God's plans are bigger. They're bigger than us. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God is working out his plans. He's working out his plans. Here we are in the midst of pain. We think everything's gone dark, but the Lord is right there. He's working out his purposes. Just continue uh, to trust him. Which brings us to our last point here this morning, is that God is with us in our pain. What would we do if God wasn't with us in our pain? I don't know. I had a text actually yesterday, um, and it simply said this, the only way I made it through the past couple of weeks was because Jesus was walking me through. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know where Andy would be if it wasn't for God being with me and walking me through. I, I don't know. But God is with us. He's with us. The Lord will never leave us or abandon us. That is his word. That's not my word. That's God's word. Matthew one twenty three. look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God is with us. He's with us. What a tremendous promise for you and I. As we encounter the pain of life, because you're all breathing this morning, there are things that have happened, things that are going on, and this whole promise of God is with us. Psalm 139, starting at verse seven, says this, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven... You were there. If I go down to the grave, you were there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. And then Matthew 18, verse 20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. The Lord is with you, walking with you, in the pain of life. It doesn't matter if it's a stubbed toe, you wrecked the car, you lost the job, the financial burden, maybe it's a sickness that you've encountered that was not on your radar, was not part of the plan. God is with you through all of these things and he cares deeply about you. So we wrap things up today on this Christmas Eve. We've talked about the purpose of pain. The pain is something that sounds an alarm. 
that says, hey, there's, there's a problem here. Many times in our life, we, we ignore warnings. We ignore things in our life, and we just kind of put a Band-Aid over it, and, and that's really why so many run to Band-Aids, whether it's alcohol or whatever. Oftentimes, that helps cover the pain of life. Put a quick Band-Aid over it. It's like sleeping, you know? Maybe I'll wake up the next morning, and maybe it'll be gone, and I won't have to worry about it anymore. And then all of a sudden, we wake up, and it's, it's right back right back there. But the purpose of pain is to alert us to there is a problem. There's something that's not right. And God wants us to trust him wherever we are in our pain. He wants to trust him. He wants us to trust him. For some in this room, if there was no pain in life, you would have never turned to God in the first place. that resonate with anybody today? If there wasn't pain, you would have never turned to the Lord in the first place. But God wants us to bring our pain, the pain of life, and wants us to surrender it to him. That's always the answer. And then something happens, it's supernatural. That as we bring the pain of of life to him, God does the amazing. He brings healing to our lives. He heals us. This, This word in the Greek, he saves. He rescues. He saves us from our sin. He rescues us, but it's so much more than that. He makes us whole. This is what our God does. And so we come before him and we bring all the crud of life to him and we're like, God, here it is. It's, it's a mess. I've had many times in my life where I literally have, it's been, it's been messy. It's been like, like I didn't want to look at it messy. And where I've had to say, God, um, this, this is a mess here. You've got to help me. You've got to help me. And the Lord comes and he saves me. He rescues me. He touches my heart in a a way that I could never have done anything on my own. And he brings peace to my life, peace to my heart. So when we get things right with God, when this relationship with the Lord is right and we come before him and we say, God, I need you. When we get this one right here, It's amazing to me what happens here in our relationships this way. Because if God has our heart, he has our focus, then everything else begins to be, to have his touch because our hearts have been impacted by God. It doesn't mean that everything is perfect and every problem goes away. I I wish, guys, I wish I wish, oh, I wish that I could just be like, boom, let's make all the pain go away. But as we bring things to the Lord, he makes a change in us. He helps us to walk with him each day. And there's a transformation that happens in our life where we are different. We are different. I can't control what somebody else does, although there's many times when I wish I could. Anybody with me on that one? Okay. I can't control somebody else, but I can make a choice here. I can make a choice here. And so this morning, there's an opportunity for you to make things right with the Lord and for you to bring your pain to Him. Now, I don't know what this looks like for you. Okay, I don't know what kind of pain you have in your life today. I told you this wasn't gonna be a traditional Christmas service. We're gonna have a team come up. They've already been talked to, so there's got you guys who I've talked to today to come down and help us pray for people today. I wanna give you an opportunity 
the first opportunity to say yes to the Lord, say, God, I want to follow you with my life. That's where everything should start. There's an opportunity to say, yes, Lord, I, I will follow you with my life. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I receive that first. Forgiveness of sins. Past, present, future. So awesome what God does. This is what happened. Jesus came for that one reason. He will save his people from, his sin, from their sins. He saves us from our sins. So that we are made right with God. That's awesome. So maybe that's you this morning. You need to do that first. And so we'll hit the pause button here. And if that's you in your heart right now, where you need to make things right with the Lord, to say, Jesus, forgive me. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. God, you call the shots. If that's you today, you need to make that decision first, right where you're at in your seat. Just tell the Lord that today. Jesus, forgive me. I want to follow you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for every decision right now that's been made to follow you. In fact, the angels are rejoicing right now. That's what scripture says. That's what scripture says. The angels are rejoicing. It's a big moment. Now here's what we're gonna do. There's an opportunity for you to receive prayer this morning. I don't know what kind of pain the truth that you have today, but I know there's a God who takes our pain and brings transformation that is so supernatural. One moment with God, one nanosecond with the Lord can be better than years of counseling. Not against counseling, I'm just saying God does amazing things when we come before him. So if, would you stand with me? The worship team's gonna lead us this morning. It's an opportunity for you to come and receive prayer with what you're walking through today. So God, use this time we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. to 